Hello, welcome again to Expounding the Bible. I am your host, Nathaniel Morrell. Today we will talk about, we will continue our series on Christmas. We will expound on the subject on where does Santa Claus come from? And uh, if you have watched our previous uh, sessions, our previous videos, we uh, dealt with Christmas as a whole and then we dealt with the specifics of Christmas. Uh, we touched the Christmas tree and we looked at what does the Bible have to say about that practice and we find in Jeremiah chapter 10, 1 through 4, that the Bible strictly forbids the uh, the uh, practice of Christmas trees. It says, God says, do not do like the heathens do in setting up a tree and decorating with silver and gold. We see in history, the historians tell us that the Christmas tree was widely used amongst the pagan nations and it was used amongst God's people when they were in apostasy. But God was trying to call his people back to, back to the truth and abandon this heathen practice. And uh, we found out that when you combine history with the Bible and see the origin of this holiday, it has more pagan more pagan uh, ties than it does ever Christian ties. And when you look at the holiday itself, it's not even about the birth of Christ. It's about other things. Christmas trees, gifts, holidays, uh, Santa Claus, whatever. So we want to deal with that today. Where does Santa Claus fit in this whole equation, in this whole uh, holiday uh, thing that is supposed to be to celebrate the birth of Christ? But when you actually see it, everybody talks more about Santa than the birth of Christ. And yet this is supposed to be uh, a holiday to celebrate Christ's birth, which we have saw is nowhere in the Bible. We've also seen that the, uh, the, the ancient heathens used to celebrate Christmas. You, they used to call it Saturnalia back in the ancient days. And they used to celebrate it from December 17th to December 25th. And they used to do the same thing we do today, give gifts, decorate trees, uh, decorate houses, with lights, uh, uh, help each other out, and 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 all that, all the mistletoe wreaths, all the stuff that we do today. They, the pagan heathens, used to do it back in the day, and you find that all these rituals, all these practices, all these traditions have come unchanged. Only the meaning. Back then they used to call it Saturnalia, today we call it Christmas. It's the same date we celebrate it on. Back then they used to celebrate it for the birth of the sun, S-U-N, the sun god, paganism. And today we do it supposedly in honor for the birth of the son of God, which is Christ, which we see has nowhere in the Bible. You cannot mix paganism and Christianity together. So, uh, so we want to look a little more on this subject. Where does Santa Claus fit in this whole thing? Where is his origin? Who is he? Does the Bible mention him? And what was he to the ancient pagan world that is transformed to today? So that's what we want to talk about. We want to talk about where does Santa Claus come from? And when, 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 when you look at this whole Christmas thing as a whole, uh, you find out that the father of all gods was Nimrod. Nimrod was the father of all gods and he established uh, numerous traditions. Let's, let's go to, to Mark, the book of Mark chapter 7. The book of Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7, and we have been dealing with Mark chapter 7 for, for uh, all these, all these uh, videos that we have uh, uh, done here because it explains, Christ is explaining the meaning of traditions. Do you go with traditions or do you go with the Bible truth? So uh, Christ is uh, telling people, take heed that your traditions do not break the Bible commandment. And he says in verse 7 of Mark chapter 7, he says, How be it in vain do they, do people, worship uh, me, teaching for the doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandments of God, ye hold to the tradition of men. Verse 9, And he, Christ, said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. So God is saying, be, Christ is saying, Beware, lest your traditions are actually violating the Bibles. And when we study this Christmas holiday and its origin, we see that 
it has all the traditions that violate the commandments of God. And God is saying, in vain do people worship me. They think that they are honoring Christ's birth when in vain they are doing it. That is nowhere found in the Bible. We actually see that Christ was born around the fall, September, October area than in the winter, uh, in the winter of December. We find that only one person was born in that December time, and that was the sun god, or Nimrod. Nimrod started, started this sun worship, this pagan worship. All worship that is not of God was started by Nimrod. All pagan worship. It can be the sun god, the moon god, all goddesses worship were started by Nimrod's wife, Samaramis. So the family was there, and, and uh, uh, Nimrod and his wife, and they were the founders of this whole pagan worship. And, and it, it could be Molech, it could be Baal, the sun god, whatever, whatever you find in all civilizations around, whether it was ancient Egyptian, ancient Roman, Babylonian, Assyrian, uh, 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 Hindu, uh, 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 whatever, Buddhist, whatever it is, you find that the gods they worship nor uh, uh, normally have typical the same story. They have, they have uh, uh, what appears to be the same similar story about what happened to them or, or something that they did. All in, in, the Roman, in the ancient Romans and Egyptians, you have the similar gods have the similar story or they do the similar thing or they act the same way. Why is that? That was because when Nimrod started this, this, this pagan tradition, and then remember when the people were dispersed after in the Tower of Babel when God changed their language and the people dispersed all around the world they took these pagan traditions with them and they started them wherever they went that's why you can go to uh, Mexico and see the ancient Aztecs worshiping their sun god with a pyramid and you can see the Egyptians worshiping their sun god with a pyramid and guess what the Aztecs and the, Egypt and the Egyptians never even known each other at their time but yet they worship the same God. Why? Because originally they all came from the same place. So when you see in, 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 in the Hindu world, you may see a goddess holding her child. And then in the, in the Egyptian world, ancient Egyptian, you may see the same thing. Only thing is that the goddesses and the childs have different names for different regions. But they are the exact same origin. So, Nimrod was the father of all this. He started every pagan worship around. Everything can be traced back to Nimrod. Let's read about Nimrod. Let's go to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter, chapter 10. Genesis chapter 10. And I want to establish, I want to drive the point that he was the one that was that started all this pagan idol worship and uh, and I wanna then we want to see what was it that he did what was it that that what was one of the rituals of one of his uh, pagan uh, ceremonies but we want to see we want to read a little bit about Nimrod in the Bible it mentions him briefly in uh, Genesis chapter 10 we read here about the lineage of Noah and his sons Noah had three sons, Ham, Jam, and Japheth. And we want to read about the lineage of Ham now. And in verse 6, it says, And the sons of Ham were Cush and Mizraim and Put and Canaan. Verse 8, And Cush begat Nimrod, and he began to be a mighty one on the earth. And he was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Stop right there. So we here see that Nimrod was strong. He was a hunter. If you ever see Orion the hunter, it is, uh, uh, it is actually a depiction of Nimrod. He was a mighty hunter, and when, and when he died, he supposedly went to become the sun god. And, uh, and at night, they would uh, always look up to him in the stars, and they found this constellation that looked like a person hunting, and they said, let's call it Orion the Hunter. He became Orion the Hunter. So Orion is just another name for Nimrod when you trace his origin. Nimrod was a mighty hunter before the Lord. What does that mean? 
Nimrod was strong, he used to hunt, he used to build, he had an empire, we'll read that in a moment, but it says he was a mighty hunter before the Lord. That doesn't mean, it, it almost leads you to believe that, okay, God is over here and he's looking at Nimrod, and Nimrod is a mighty hunter before God in God's eyes. That, that's not what this verse is actually talking about. When you look up that word before, it doesn't mean to stand in front of you and and perform or anything like she's like 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 he's performing before me. That's not what it's talking about. That word is meaning against. He was a mighty hunter against the Lord. So what do you what, what does that mean? That means that he since he was the father of all gods, he was going against God by trying to make himself God. He was the typical, what we would call, antichrist of his day. So instead of continuing the worship of God, Jehovah, he started to establish idolatry worship. Sun God was now the new God of the earth to these people. And, that, and, and their main day of worship was not Saturday Sabbath, as God has said and instructed. It was the first day of the week, which is Sunday. And that's why a lot of people, billions of people all across the world, ignorantly keep this Sunday, not knowing that that day is not the Sabbath that the Bible is talking about. God, uh, Christ specifically said that seventh day Sabbath is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. You can find that all over in the Bible from the New Testament to the Old Testament, with the Old Testament in its origin at creation. And, and, and people started worshipping on Sunday. It was actually a pagan heathen practice started by Nimrod. So Nimrod was un trying to undo everything that God had already established. New laws, new day of worship, new gods, everything, you name it. All was derived from Nimrod. He was a mighty one before the Lord, or he was a mighty hunter against God. And it is said in verse 10, And the beginning of his, Nimrod's kingdom, was Babel, Erech, uh, Akkad, Kal Kalne, and in the land of Shinar. And out of that land went forth Asher, and builded Nineveh, and the city of Rehoboth, and Kala. So he was one of the founders of Nineveh. It also says he, he built Babel. He was the one in charge of building the Tower of Babel, which God had to come down and destroy. Uh, he, uh, it also says he lived in the land of Shinar. The land of Shinar. And, when you, and when, if, you, if you don't know where that land of Shinar is, it's actually Babylon. And when you look at the history of the Babylonians, it is full of wickedness. And you can see all the origins that, uh, that, that Nimrod did if you see the ancient artifacts of that city. Everything was derived from Nimrod. So, you may be saying, this video is supposed to be about, this study is supposed to be about, about, about Santa, Santa Claus and his origin. Where, where does he come from? Well, and, and why, why are you talking about Nimrod if this is supposed to be a study to show us where Santa Claus is, his origin? So, that's the question you've probably been asking. Why am I dealing with Nimrod instead of Santa Claus? And I will tell you right now, how about if I uh, tell you that the word Santa at one time was a popular nickname for Nimrod? Let, let, let that just sink in. We just dealt with Nimrod, that he was a mighty hunter against God, and that he established every form of pagan idolatry worship that goes against God. So how about if I say that Santa was a popular nickname for Nimrod at his day? Don't believe me? Let's go to uh, the history books here. Let's go to the historians, see what the historians say. This is uh, Langer's Encyclopedia of World History. And it says so under the article of Santa. It says, Santa was a common name for Nimrod throughout Asia Minor. 
This was also the same fire god who came down the chimneys of ancient pagans and the same fire god to whom infants were burned and eaten in human sacrifice amongst those who were once God's people. So even the historians would say that Santa was a popular name for Nimrod and that it was the same God that used to come down the chimneys not to bring gifts as we see today but to what it says used to come down the chimneys of ancient pagans and the same fire gods to whom infants were uh, uh, sacrificed to. So the, you find similar characteristics. Santa Claus comes down through the chimney to give gifts to children, but back in the day, it was Santa Claus that used to come down the chimneys so then you can offer your children to him. That was the pagan god that Nimrod started, and he was depicted as one of them. And, 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 and when, you look on, when you look on further, uh, let's, let's, just, let's just pause right here for a moment, and let's just see something. Let's just see something real quick. I'm going to put up a picture here. And uh, look at this picture. And there you see a depiction, a Babylonian depiction of Nimrod in the left. And you got a depiction of Santa Claus on the right. And, uh, and you see uh, Nimrod was actually uh, lived around 4,000 years ago or 2000 BC. And uh, what do they have in common? Look at that. Ooh. They're both holding Christmas trees. Hmm, that's strange. How about, look at, look at Nimrod. Nimrod is holding a reindeer. What does Santa Claus use uh, to, to, to drive out his sleigh? He uses a reindeer. They both also have long beards. But, and you're probably thinking, that's just a coincidence. No, they are both one and the same. Nimrod is Santa Claus. Santa Claus is Nimrod. Well, Nimrod's dead right now, so Santa Claus is a is a a a, a depiction, symbolic meaning of Nimrod. Let's put it that way. But it both has the same origin because Nimrod started this worship. So 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 let's look at. Obviously, Santa Claus wouldn't be the same God Nimrod started because Santa Claus, we don't offer our children to be burned to, 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 this, to this fire God. So let's look at, let's look at a little more the, uh, the meaning, the origin of Santa Claus. We know that Santa Claus derived from Nimrod. History says that Nimrod, it was the same God of the fire God that used to come down the chimneys not to bring gifts but to burn uh, 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 humans in human sacrifice. So let's look at this. If Santa Claus was Nimrod, another name for Nimrod is Vulcan. Saturn, which is where we get Saturnalia. Uh, 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 Baal, we find the word Baal, the god Baal, a lot of times in the Bible. And Baal was actually the sun god. And, uh, and we see, remember Elijah? Elijah was in Israel, always reproving uh, uh, Israel for worshiping Baal instead of the one true God. And, 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 and Israel fell deep into apostasy because, uh, because of Baal worship. Another name for him is also Molech. Who was Molech? Molech is that same fire god who they used to offer human sacrifices to. We read about that also in the Bible. Molech is found plenty of times in the Bible. Let's look at this in, 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 in Jeremiah chapter, chapter 32. The book of Jeremiah chapter 32. Let's read about Molech and a little bit about Baal. Let's see what the Bible has, what God has to say about these two uh, 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 gods that were both were another name for Nimrod, which was another name for Nimrod was also Santa. Let's look at, let's look at this. Jeremiah 32 and verse 35. God is telling Israel, and they build the high, they built the high places of Baal, which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to cause 
caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire unto Molech, which I commanded them not, neither came it into my mind that they should do this abomination to cause Judah to sin. So God is telling, God is telling Jeremiah, look at what the children of Israel is doing. They are worshiping Baal and they are making a fire and making their children to pass through the fire and burn them to Molech. And it, God is saying, it hasn't even crossed my mind that they would go to such a vile, do, do such a vile thing. Such an such a, 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 a abomination, he says. He said, God says, it hasn't even crossed my mind that they were going to do such a thing. So, so, so you may say, how are you tying Santa Claus to Molech? Well, it's, it's simple. Not only does history say that Santa Claus's origin was the fire god to which children were offered to, but if you also look at the origin of the name, Santa Claus' origin is Nimrod. Nimrod was also Molech. And Molech used to offer the same thing that the history books say that origins of Santa Claus used to do the same ritual, which was offer children up to the fire. So you may say, but we don't offer children to the fire to Santa Claus today. But in a different term, we do. These ancient pagans used to worship Santa Claus and used to offer their children as sacrifice into the fire to Molech. Today, we do the exact same thing. We offer our children up as sacrifice. But instead of burning them, Instead of sacrificing and ending their lives, we are killing them spiritually. Instead of killing them in real life, we're killing our children spiritually. We let, we let our kids, we let our children go to Santa Claus, go to his lap, go, go uh, uh, and take pictures and hang out with Santa Claus. You're killing them spiritually. You are offering your children to this modern day Molech. The old Molech that used to actually not be the lovable uh, uh, person to give children gifts, but the one who used to burn them, who used to eat them, who used to accept child sacrifice to please their gods. This is all the wickedness that Nimrod started. And it is all in this, most are uh, all in this holiday of Christmas, which is supposed to be to honor Christ. So if it's to honor Christ, why do we bring all these wicked pagan uh, 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 traditions to the holiday for. It, 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 makes, it doesn't make any sense. Remember when we said that, that Nimrod was a mighty hunter against God and that he established a false religion, he was antichrist, and that, and, that, and that everything he did was to try to be as God. He was trying to be the God of this earth. He was going against everything that God ever established. Well, let's see if Santa Claus has the same, has the same characteristics as Nimrod does. Uh, Nimrod went against God, so obviously let's see if Santa Claus goes against God. Um, Santa Claus says that he knows when you're good or bad. Isn't that what God is supposed to know? Only God can know if you're good or bad. Santa Claus says he can be everywhere at one time. Mm. That's, uh, that's God can only do that. God said that he could only be the one everywhere at one time. Um, um, Santa Claus wears red. If you look in the Bible, Christ also wears red. Santa Claus has white beard and white hair. The Bible says that Christ also has white beard, white hair. So everything that Santa Claus tries to do is counterfeiting and copying what Christ has already established. Showing that Santa Claus is nothing but a type of Antichrist. Showing that he is trying to be the God of this earth and trying to go against everything that is ever God. The same characteristics that Nimrod had. It's the same thing. Santa was a popular name for Nimrod, and Nimrod established the worship of Molech, which is associated with Santa as the fire god. That, used to off, that, you, that people used to offer children to be burned at stake. And the same thing we do today. We offer our children to Santa Claus. We offer our children to Santa Claus. But we are not, we are not killing them in reality, but we are killing them spiritually. 
because that has nothing to do with the birth of Christ. It has nothing to do with anything. It has all to do with this wicked uh, idolatry worship. So how does Santa Claus come to our midst, you may ask? Well, remember when the church back in the year around 300 in the 4th century, when they tried to get the pagans and Christians to worship together, they had to make minor changes. They said, we cannot keep this, we, we want to keep this God, this Molech, but, but we cannot have the same characteristics that the pagans have him as doing, or else the Christians won't accept him. So let's grab this God, and let's change the characteristics a little bit. Let's change his mad face to a good, uh, jolly face, and, and, and let's have him there. He, he, instead of eating children, let's make him go to children and give him gifts. Let's make him look a little happy and joyous. And instead of bringing the children to be offered up as sacrifice, we'll bring the children so then he can give them, you know, little gifts here and there. And slowly but surely, the public has accepted it, especially amongst the Christian world. They try to mix paganism with Christianity so then both can be happy, but it doesn't work. The Bible says that paganism and Christianity cannot come together. So that is the just a brief origin. Uh, oh, and before we finish, let us go back to Mark chapter 7 and read again what, uh, what Christ has said about these traditions. It says in verse 7, Christ is saying, How be in vain do they worship me, teaching for the doctrines the commandments of men, for laying aside the commandments of God, ye hold to the traditions of men. Verse 9, And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandments of God, that ye may keep your own traditions. We are rejecting the commandments of God, that this is is a pagan, evil, wicked practice. And we are rejecting the commandments of God for the favor of traditions of men. So that is the uh, brief study I wanted to uh, do uh, on the origin of Santa Claus. He is actually Nimrod, another name. Uh, and, uh, and that is what the Bible says about these pagan practices. They should not even be in this supposedly holiday of celebrating Christ's birth. And as we see more and more, this holiday of Christ's birth actually has nothing to do with Christ. Uh, thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please press like. Also, you can comment below. Tell us what you think. Um, also, we are on Facebook at Expounding the Bible. Until then, this is your host, Nathaniel Merrill, saying, have a blessed day.